So I tend to stay um, as a preference, even as a digital nomad, in hotels um, rather than the main alternatives, which are uh, privately managed accommodation, uh, which is through a number of websites. So it's not just, say, through booking.com that you do hotels. You can do privately managed places. It depends on the country. Um, but obviously Airbnb is quite popular as well for people who are no holiday, staying around the world, digital nomading, etc. I thought one of the first videos I would do on this particular accommodation issue is why I choose hotels and not Airbnb. Now for me, Airbnb is uh, the least preferred. Um, there are about five to six reasons why they aren't my priority. Um, and I can tell you a few stories, which I probably will. Um, the first and the biggest reason is the cancellation factor. So when I book a hotel, I know that my hotel booking gets confirmed. And while there might be a change of room or location in the sense of, you know, sometimes you might <clears throat> kind of like when you get on a plane, book economy and get upgraded. Hasn't happened to me. Um, but, you know, we can live in hope. Um, but basically the accommodation style might change, you know, the expectations of what you get. You might get the things in the reviews that say they're a bit older versus the places that have been updated in the hotel, but the odds are they don't have a book or well, not in my experience so far. And if, if you've booked and confirmed, they have your booking, you get a confirmation, you're secure it's happening, you're going to turn up and that room is available for you for the time frame that you've booked it for. Very clearly about check-in and check-out. There's no discussion, there's no issues, there's nothing to worry about. Uh, that has not been my experience with Airbnb. Uh, I have small experience with Airbnb and it's part of the reason I won't do it again. But a big one is their cancellation, as I've said. it's. Uh, I have a huge issue with the fact that you can book something, book it a dramatically large amount of time in advance. You can book it for a decent rate based on that. You can be very clear. You can have planned everything around that. And then even at the last minute, they can just go cancel. So the story I have <clears throat> is from a few years ago. Uh, I think it would have been 2019. And I was traveling for work uh, for a company that's head office was in the Netherlands then, isn't now. But it was and we decided to go to we were going to the several offices through the week after but we decided to go early with my friend and her partner and her and just spend the weekend there and see the city and, and do all the touristy things you do and have fun and we did and we booked it and we're sitting at the airport um the flight's leaving in like an hour and a half and we'd be there half an hour late uh, an hour after that so say you know three hours we're hitting the accommodation and she gets a message to say it's cancelled just cancelled. Now, I know since that time, Airbnb's tightened up their guidelines on that, but still there's a wide truckload of opportunity. They can drive it through and go, oh, I'm sorry, not available. But it can basically be that they've put it on a different site and they've got a better rate or they can make more money or whatever their reasoning is, it doesn't suit them. They'll just cancel. And there's not usually another alternative. Now, there are some people and companies that work through Airbnb and I'm sure they run more than one property, but I don't want to hear a cancellation that's going to upset the apple cart of my plans when this is the least thing I want to have to worry about. I want to turn up and know that my accommodation is available and in the, in the state that I expected. So I find for me, Airbnb doesn't ensure that because it can just cancel and it can cancel any time from when you book till probably even when you turn up. Um, that's a, that's a huge red flag for me. Hotels don't do that. They just don't, or that has not been my experience. Now I'm sure it could be the odd person in the comments who's had that experience and could share that story, but no. And the thing is, when I book somewhere, I look it up. So I look up um, how far it is from, if I'm going in by train or plane, how far it is. Now, obviously with a plane sometimes, you know, they're, you're either getting transport in from, or you might, you know, get it in an Uber or a Bolt, depending on if it's cheaper <clears throat> in that country. But basically, you know, I check everything out, supermarkets, um, laundromats if it's not included in the room itself uh, what, what other services I'm going to look into if there's something else I need to be doing while I'm there so if it's in one of the European countries that have a pri that will have a Primark and I need to buy some cheap replacements for things or whatever it is I will have looked all of that up so for me to have to then start again 
at any point during my booking or the last minute, that's not something I want to have happen. So that's my big red flag for Airbnb. They can just cancel you. They can confirm and then change their mind. I've decided you're all coming to stay here. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing for me is safety. Now, there are still safety concerns at a hotel. You, you can't rem- I live in the world, I'm female. There, aren't, there isn't the ability to remove safety concerns completely from anywhere. But my experience in most hotels, again, is um, it's quite secure. You can take uh, precautions on your side. But even if you have a sign on the door that says, do not disturb or privacy, please, they don't disturb. They don't come in. You don't hear from the cleaners. Nobody turns up. You literally have to have a sign on the door that says, please clean and or leave this privacy sign off or they won't, won't disturb you. So you have privacy and it's fine. Um, if this is a person's private property and you're just renting it um, as an Airbnb, they can let themselves in. They have a set of keys. They could let themselves in at any time when you're staying there. Now, as I said, it can happen in hotels, but reputationally, they would not be able to operate as the business they do if that was the case. And so for the most part, there are no circumstances upon which hotel staff, unless you've maybe overstayed, let themselves in to your room during the period of time you've paid to be there. You are secure. um, And so there's a little more safety, I think, as a default along hotels. Now, this one's a big one for me too but it would probably be number three in this scenario, which is the likelihood of illegal cameras. You see YouTube videos on this. You see postings about it. You see stories where police have been called because they've found cameras. Now, once again, hotels allow for privacy. They provide that option of privacy. And, you know, Korean love hotels aside, which is a whole other discussion and not an experience I've had. I haven't been to Korea. Um, <clears throat> the likelihood of illegal cameras in your room in a hotel is much lower than an Airbnb. Again, you're depending on the honesty of the, the person who you've rented this place from to not decide to take advantage of put cameras in your bathroom or your bedroom or to be cameraing you when you're in your own privacy. So you're relying on them to preserve and protect your own privacy and not do this and not be watching you. And while that's, as I said, it can happen anywhere, it's particularly something you hear about in Airbnb experiences and not in hotels. Because if hotels were found to be doing that, the hotel wouldn't get guests. Um, So, yeah, and while the Airbnbs are struck off, I'm sure there's quite a few that they never find them. So, again, if you're staying at most hotels, the odds are lower for that. And... I like those odds being lower. 